hello and welcome to this video on propagation of error so before you watch this video i hope you've watched the um previous video just um the one following this uh sorry the one before this one because i was able to establish um some things that might be helpful for you to understand um this particular topic very well but in as much uh, as you might have watched it or you might have not watched it I'll try my best to explain so that you will understand nonetheless so we are talking about propagation of error addition and subtraction there is multiplication and division but I'm going to split that one to another video so that you will understand so I'm going to be analyzing how those error spreads when we carry out addition and subtraction so then um, we are going to have um, a measured value let's say I have two measured value X and Y so consider two measured values X and Y with their absolute errors okay Delta X and delta y so and i want to determine for the first case which is addition how will this error propagate or how will the absolute errors be propagated let's assume we decided to add x and y how will the error propagate so assuming i want to add x and y okay and I want to add them with their errors. So I have x plus or minus delta x. Remember this is the right way to express it. Okay. So the measured value that the measured value then it's approximate an approximation, which is its uh, absolute error, then plus then y plus or minus uh, delta y. So I want to add this value and I want to see how the errors propagate. So let me assume that the result is going to be z plus or minus delta z. So plus or minus delta z is my interest. What will delta z look like um, after I add these two quantities? So I'm just going to see my z plus minus delta z. Okay. Remember this plus and um, plus or minus is just trying to tell us. I, I, I'm going to throw more light in, into it when we get to um, subtraction but just know that whenever you're taking absolute value you just know that um, it could absolute value is this guy over here delta x delta y okay delta x is actually telling me the size of um, the error the size of the error the actual size and the plus or minus is trying to tell me that it may be positive or it may be negative is that okay that's why when you put a measured value and you put the error you actually do plus or minus and this actually creates this plot on plus or minus creates what we call a toler tolerance interval okay i'm just gonna write it down tolerance interval so you're going to to get the tolerance interval you do um the value minus delta x then the value measured value plus delta x so this gives you um the tolerance interval the tolerance interval is the range of values for which that particular measurement is actually correct so whenever you measure and you attach a particular um, absolute error you're just trying to create a range of values for which your measurement is going to be correct and um, precise at the same time so accurate and precision is what we use to define a particular measurement and my tolerance interval is the range of values for which my measurement is accurate and precise now um back to how this error propagates when we carry out addition so you discover that i have x plus delta x plus minus delta x then plus y plus minus delta y so what i have here is uh x plus minus delta x and plus plus has little effect on this guy over here plus minus um delta y so i collect the like terms i have x plus y plus minus delta x plus minus delta y 
okay so i have z plus minus delta z okay is now going to be equal to half x plus y so since these ones are just kind of like <laughs> looking like something like this delta x plus delta y not necessarily because i factored this plus minus out not necessarily because i factored it out although it could be a reason but you need to understand that whenever you're carrying out addition plain addition okay the absolute errors usually add together and they actually become one absolute error okay so z plus minus delta z is equal to this so how do we go from here you can now see the measured value co corresponds to this guy over here so from this particular equation one i can derive that z corresponds to x plus y so this is the measured value then the absolute error absolute error abs error the absolute error delta z will now correspond to this guy over here which is delta x plus delta y so the plus or minus the plus or minus then this is the boundary so this is just like complex number analysis you have real parts plus in that um, imaginary parts so we compare both sides 2 plus let me say j5 if i have something like this my a will be equal to 2 and my b will be equal to 5 because b is the imaginary part so coming over to this place you have your measured parts as this guy then your absolute value parts as this guy over here so this is how errors propagate when we add um measured values with individual um, um absolute errors so what will happen is that all the absolute errors they are going to be added up together to get the final or the resultant this particular place is what we call the resultant um portion the resultant measurement okay resultant measurements so it's gonna add up to give us the resultant measurements in terms of the size um, that's the actual size of the measured value and the absolute error the resultant absolute error so the resultant absolute error is just a summation of the individual absolute errors so that's how we um, take care of um, propagation of errors in addition so let's go to propagation of errors in um, subtraction so propagation of errors in subtraction so to carry out propagation of errors in subtraction now i want you to flow with me carefully so i still have my x i still have my y i still have the absolute errors okay so let me assume i say x plus or minus delta x is that okay then minus y plus or minus delta y so what is it going to be let me assume my answer will be z plus or minus delta z okay so i always assume the the left hand side is always going to be assumed to be like this so let's see what happens to the right hand side so if you start solving this um, particular equation the normal way you have x plus minus delta x then and i have minus y so what do you think happens to this place minus sign then plus or minus delta y what do you think happens um what do you think happens well um let me just say i do minus or plus delta y okay let me just say i do something like this and i'll explain my reasons for doing that later in the future so at the end of the day i'll have um x minus y plus or minus delta x then minus or plus delta y then something like this so at the end of the day i'll have x minus y so watch what is going to happen at this particular point now these are this is not the conventional mathematics that you know so you might be finding it hard understanding why it's like this or why i'm going to do the next thing i'm going to do which is one plus or minus then delta x plus delta y for both of them so that my z plus or minus delta z 
will not correspond to this form so someone will that would be like how is it that it is actually like this or how did it become like this so plus or minus delta x minus or plus delta y they are just still trying to tell us the same thing this delta x is a size and this delta y is a size and the plus or minus sign is typically just telling us that it could be positive or it could be negative that's in terms of a sign but when we are combining them together the they will add together they are going to add together so the next question will be why is it that they add together why do they add together because when we we're solving the one for plus it was sort of straightforward and perhaps there was no ambiguity but why is it that the minus one is adding together now i'm going to explain that for you and you understand why it actually adds together so minus y so this is the x minus y and delta z is still the same thing as delta x plus delta y so the same thing happens in addition that happens in subtraction or the same thing happens in subtraction that happens in addition um when we are adding two quantities measured quantities their sizes or their measured values will add then the absolute values will be added together to get the resultant absolute value when you're subtracting two measured values the measured values is going to be subtracted okay a first and second you're going to subtract it then what are you going to do next you're going to add not subtract the actual value and i'm going to show you why it's like that so let's take an example okay of why whenever we are dealing with negative values um we actually subtract um I'm thinking of leaving it to another video um, yeah I better do that in another video so that you won't spend so much on this particular video but till then like subscribe share hit the notification button so that you can stay updated on um, the videos that I post in regards to this course so thank you for watching um, see you in the next video where we are going to analyze um, why subtraction actually results in the addition of the absolute values instead of the subtraction of the absolute values. So stay tuned.